And welcome back. This is Baller Scuba with more Zork 2, the Wizard of Fraboz. Fraboz. We're in the Wizard's Workshop. Uh, when we last left off, I made it here. I do need to backtrack a little bit to pick up a new item. I honestly thought we weren't going to need it this early, but we're going to need it this early. So let's head north back to the guarded room, north again to the gobwebby corridor, and then northeast back to the carousel room. I, I am going to need that blue sphere. So from here then, we need to head southwest. Southwest again, they change the directions on you. And then south, back into the wizard's workshop. All right, now we are good to go. From here, we can head west to the wizard's workroom. This room is the wizard's workroom. A hall continues east and west, and a larger room lies to the south. There are many shelves and racks on the walls, but the wizard's workbench dominates the room. It is made of dark, heavy wood bound with iron. The workbench is stained from many years of use and is deeply gouged as though some huge clawed animal was imprisoned on it. There are burn marks and even notes written in crabbed hand. Many arcane items are scattered about the bench, alembics, mortar, and pestle, small knives of various sizes, odd scraps of vellum, wax candles, and much more. In the center of a relatively clear area of the bench are affixed three stands, ruby, sapphire, and diamond, which form a triangle. So what I am going to need to do is uh, put my red sphere on the ruby stand. This is where they go. Then we can put the blue sphere that I had to go back and pick up on the sapphire stand. Now from here, with the two done, obviously we don't have the diamond yet, or at least what goes on the diamond stand just yet. Uh, we are going to head south from here uh, to the pentagram room. In this room inscribed on the floor is a great pentagram drawn with black chalk. In its center is a black circle. Uh, what I'm going to do for the time being is just drop a few things in here that I'll probably come back and pick up later. Uh, drop the violin, the necklace, gold key, and the dragon statuette. Pretty much everything that I have in my inventory. Now I can head uh, back north into the wizard's workroom and west from here to the aquarium room. Here a dark hallway turns a corner. To the south is a dark room. To the east is a fitful light. Filling the northern half of the room is a huge aquarium. The aquarium contains a baby sea serpent. What could possibly go wrong here? Let's hit the aquarium with my sword. The sword shatters the glass wall of the aquarium, spilling out an impressive amount of salt water and wet sand. It also spills out an extremely annoyed sea serpent who bites angrily at the sword. And then at you. He is having difficulty breathing, and he seems to hold you responsible for his current problem. He tries to slither across the stone floor towards you. Fortunately, he expires mere inches away from biting off your foot. A clear crystal sphere sits amid the sand and broken glass on the bottom of the aquarium. I'm going to go ahead and take that crystal sphere. Now that we have that, we can just head east and put the crystal sphere on the diamond stand. As you place the clear crystal sphere in the diamond stand, a low humming noise begins, and you can feel the hairs on the back of your neck begin to stand up. The three spheres begin to vibrate faster and faster as the noise becomes higher and higher pitched. Three puffs of smoke, one red, one blue, one white, rise up from empty stands. The spheres are gone, but in the center of the triangle formed by the stands is now a black stand of obsidian in which rests a strange black sphere. Take the black sphere, surely. This will work out well. Surely. All right. South. Can I get all of these now? I can. All right. Put the black sphere in the pentagram. What could go wrong? A cold wind blows outward from the sphere. The candles flicker and a low moan, almost inaudible, is heard. It rises in volume and pitch until it becomes a high-pitched keening. A dim shape becomes visible in the air above the sphere. The shape resolves into a large and somewhat formidable-looking demon. He looks around, tests the walls of the pentagram experimentally, then sees you. Hmm, a new master, he says under his breath. Greetings, O oh master. 
would desire a service as our contract stateth, for some pittance of wealth, some trifle, I will gratify thy desires to the utmost limit of my powers, and they are not inconsiderable. He makes a pass with his massive arms, and the walls begin to shake a little. Another pass, and the shaking stops. A nice effect. I find it makes for a better relationship to give a, such a demonstration early on. He grins vilely. Suddenly the wizard materializes in the room. He is astonished by what he sees. His servant in deep conversation with a common adventurer. He draws forth his wand, waves it frantically and in pants. Frobiz, Frobazel, Frobnoid. The demon laughs heartily. You no longer control the black crystal hedge, wizard. Your wand is powerless. Your doom is sealed. The demon turns to you expectantly. I bet he does. So what we're going to do is uh, pretty much give all our treasures to the demon. I need the lamp, though. Fancy violin, to which he says, Most fine, master, but tis not enough. I will do a great service, and are not great services bought at great price? It's a Stradivarius, man. I give him the pearl necklace, very nice, but not enough. Delicate gold key, ah, truly magnificent, keep them coming. And a golden dragon statuette, almost halfway there, a worthy one. And, and, we made it halfway, apparently. Uh, but, for the time being, I do believe the wizard is, uh, stuck, so to speak, in this room. So... I'm going to drop a save. So from the pentagram room, we are free to move on, and the wizard should leave us alone from this time forward. So uh, let's head north to the work room, east to the workshop, north, north, and northeast. Back to the carousel room. I'm going to go ahead and take all of this. I don't think I need all of it. I don't think I need the placemat and the steel box, but I'm going to take them anyway, and hopefully it works out well, and... I don't need to drop them. Uh, we're going to head north again, back to the Marble Hall. Uh, I'm going to actually take this brick now. That'll, that will be useful. Uh, then we're going to head back south into the carousel room, northwest to the cool room, west to the ice room. If you remember, this is where the dragon died, and he melted a few things. So we can head west again into the lava room. This is a small room whose walls are formed by an old lava flow. There are exits here to the east and the south. On the floor lies a Moby Ruby. I'm going to need that Moby Ruby. So let's go ahead and take that. And then we can head south to the volcano bottom. You're at the bottom of a large dormant volcano. High above you, light enters from the cone of the volcano. The only exit is to the north. There is a large and extremely heavy wicker basket here. An enormous cloth bag is draped over the side and is firmly attached to the basket. A metal receptacle is fastened to the center of the basket. Dangling from the basket is a piece of braided wire. I'm going to do what everybody would do in this situation. Get into the basket, of course. Uh, then we can open up the uh, receptacle. We have to do this in a very specific order here. Uh, put the newspaper in in receptacle, light a match, burn newspaper. If, if you're still holding on to the newspaper, that will kill you for the record. Uh, the newspaper burns inside the receptacle. The cloth bag inflates as it fills with hot air. A small label drops from the bag into the basket. The match has gone out. I don't really care about that. All right, so uh, once we have done that. All we need to do is wait. Uh, actually, let's go ahead and uh, read label. All right, we also take it when that happens. It's the Fabaz Magic Balloon Company. Hello, aviator. To land your balloon, say land. Otherwise, you're on your own. No warranty expressed or implied. Uh, what we need to do is wait until I believe this happens. Uh, volcano core in the basket. You are about 100 feet above the bottom of the volcano. The top of the volcano is clearly visible here. The cloth bag is inflated and there is a newspaper burned in the receptacle. A braid wire is dangling over the side of the basket. All right, we need to wait further. We're not high enough. There we go. That is where we need to be, near the small ledge. You are about 200 feet above the volcano floor. Looming above is the rim of the volcano. There is a small ledge on the west side. The cloth bag is inflated and there is a newspaper burned in the receptacle. A braided wire is dangling over the side 
of the basket. All right, we need to land here. The basket comes to a stop. Narrow ledge in the basket. You are on a narrow ledge within an old dormant volcano. This ledge is about halfway between the floor below and the rim above. There is an exit to the south. The cloth bag is inflated, and there is a newspaper buried in the receptacle. A braided wire is dangling over the side of the basket. On the floor is a priceless gold zork mid, a valuable collector's item. There is a small hook attached to the rock here, outside the basket. So what we need to do is tie the wire to the hook. That should work. There we go. The balloon is fastened to the hook. Good. So it should stay there. All right. Exit the balloon then. You're on your own feet again. And get that uh, Zork mid. I'm, I'm probably going to need that as well. Then we can go south from here to the library. This, is mu this must have been a large library, probably for the royal family. All the shelves have been gnawed to pieces by unfriendly gnomes. To the north is an exit. A handsome book, bound in green leather, sits in the center of the room. Right beside the purple book, the purple book sits a white one. Worn and battered in one corner of the room is a blue book. Lying in the dust and covered with mold is a purple book. Well, that, that all sounds... Lovely, doesn't it? I'm going to get that, that purple book, though. Your load is too heavy. All right, drop a uh, steel box. Now get the purple book. I don't think I need that steel box. All right, uh, open purple book. Opening the purple book reveals a flathead stamp. All right, we will take that stamp. I might already have it, though. But no, I, there we go. I, I took the stamp. That is probably going to be useful at some point. Now I can just drop the purple book. I don't need that anymore. Plus it's taking up a little bit of weight. All right, we'll head north from here back to the narrow ledge. There's a large and extremely heavy wicker basket here. An enormous cloth bag is attached to the basket and inflated. A metal receptacle is fastened to the center of the basket. In it is a burning newspaper. A piece of wire tied to a hook holds the balloon in place. That should be good. That should be good. All right, let's uh, enter the balloon. Untie the wire. And hopefully, we will continue to rise. A volcano near a small ledge in the basket. The cloth bag isn't... Yeah, we've gone through all that. Let's uh, wait again. Volcano by viewing ledge in the basket. You are high above the, the floor of the volcano. The rim of the volcano looks very narrow, and you are very near it. To the east is what appears to be a viewing ledge. Too, lin too thin to land on. And then the same stuff. So we're going to wait again. And there we go. Volcano near the wide ledge in the basket. You are near the rim of the volcano. Above you is, above you, it is open to the sky. To the west, there is a place to land on a wide ledge. So let's go ahead and... Land there. Now we're on the wide ledge. In, a, in the basket. You are on a wide ledge high in the volcano. The rim of the volcano is about 200 feet above, and there is a precipitous drop to the bottom. There is a small door to the south. There is a small hook attached to the rock here. All right. Tie the wire to the hook. Now the balloon is fastened to the hook. And we can exit the balloon. Make sure you do it in this order. Things don't work out well if you don't. Then we can head south. You are in a dusty old room which is featureless except for an exit on the north side. Embedded in the far wall is a rusty box. It appears to be somewhat damaged since an oblong hole has been chipped out of the front of it. So now we do have a, a rusty box. Hopefully I can do something with it. All right. Uh, put the string into brick. Is that good? All right. That worked. That worked. Put brick in a rusty box hole. There were too many nouns in that sentence. Okay. Uh, put brick in hole in rusty box. There were too many nouns in that sentence. Put brick in um, rusty box, just like that. 
Really? Put brick in hole. Oh, God. That bothers me that I was that specific. Okay. We put the brick in the hole. I wasted a few turns, but honestly, I don't care too much about the moves. As long as I get the score that I need. So, the brick is now in the hole. Light a match. Burn the string with match. The string starts to burn. The match has gone out. Now go north to the wide ledge. There is a large and extremely heavy wicker basket here. I think we've seen all of this. There is an explosion nearby. Yes, we caused an explosion. So let's head back south. You are in a dusty old room, which is featureless except for an exit on the north side. On the far wall is a rusty box whose door has been blown off. The room is cluttered with debris from an explosion. The walls seem ready to collapse. The excessively gaudy crown of Lord Dimwit Flathead is here. The box contains a card. Let's go ahead and take that crown. Uh, can I take the card as well? All right, uh, let's go north. Nothing new here, okay. And then we can read the card. Warning, this room was constructed over very weak rock strata. Detonation of explosives in this room is strictly prohibited. Frobo's Magic Co Cave Company, per M. Agrippa Foreman. You may recall that recent explosion. Probably as a result of it, you hear an ominous rumbling, as if a nearby room had collapsed. Got out just in time, apparently. Uh, let's get into the balloon. Now in the basket. Untie the wire. And close the receptacle. Now we can wait until it uh, starts falling. Should continue. There we go. The balloon descends. That is what we want to see. And we'll just continue. The ledge collapses. That was a narrow escape. Let's just keep going down near the small ledge uh, at the volcano core. And now we are back at the volcano bottom. The cloth bag is inflated and some smoke is leaking out of the closed receptacle. A braided wire is dangling over the side of the basket. Remember, you still need a little bit of heat uh, in order to descend. Otherwise, you'll just plummet to your doom. And then that would not be good. All right, we can get out of the balloon. And honestly, we, we don't need that matchbook anymore. So we're going to go ahead and drop it. And with that done, I'm going to drop another save.